Swayze Field, Oxford, Mississippi. Game two of the Oxford Regional. Ole Miss out of the SEC, the number 12 national seed in the Ohio Valley Conference champion, Jacksonville State Gamecocks. NCAA Regional Baseball is presented by Capital One. The Oxford Regional hosted by Ole Miss. They are the number 12 overall national seed, the number one seed, and they are meeting Jacksonville State. Earlier today, Clemson, the number three seed here in the Oxford Regional, got an 8-4 win over Illinois. The Clemson Tigers advance to that winner's bracket game tomorrow. Illinois will play an elimination game at 1 o'clock Eastern tomorrow. Alongside Lance Cormier, I'm Richard Cross. Glad to have you along as we continue with postseason baseball. Good win earlier today for Clemson, and now a great atmosphere for game two. Oh, atmosphere couldn't be better. The, the crowd's here. The weather's great. It's going to be a fun game. You look at the matchup between these two teams. There are certain players that you look for. For Ole Miss, they've got a senior in Ryan Olenek, center fielder. He's kind of seen everything, done everything, battled through a bunch of injuries, and has been a really good player. Yeah, the four-year starter, 311 career average, but the last two years over 345. He's been a mainstay, but the biggest thing for him now, makes him important, he can move from center field, play third base in SEC championship game, also the back end of the bullpen with two saves. So he can provide a lot of positives to each team. Ryan Olenek sixth in the SEC in batting average. Nick Gaddis, part of what makes the offense go first team all Ohio Valley Conference this year. Yeah, the mainstay in the Gamecock lineup the last two years, 34 doubles, 23 home runs, 97 RBIs. If he goes, the Gamecocks will go. We'll keep an eye on that big bat, Nick Gaddis for Jacksonville State. You compare the two teams, batting average a little bit higher for Ole Miss, more home runs for Jacksonville State. You look at the fielding percentage. Ole Miss has been a good defensive team. Jacksonville State, 967, not a great number defensively. No, and that, that's going to be a big part. If, you, if they're going to kick the ball around, then Jacksonville State's not going to be able to play with Ole Miss. But if they can make the plays, their offense is good enough to keep them in the game. A packed house expecting better than 10,000 tonight for game two of the Oxford Regional. Ole Miss and Jacksonville State coming up next. Back with you in Oxford, Mississippi, Swayze Field, packed house tonight for Ole Miss and Jacksonville State, game two of the Oxford Regional. Jacksonville State was picked second in the Ohio Valley, second to Moorhead State, but they met Moorhead State in the championship game and had no trouble. Led by three hits from Devin Brown and Isaac Alexander, the Gamecocks got the win 10-3, to extending their winning streak to 12 consecutive games. They currently have the second longest winning streak in the country. Jacksonville State gets the automatic bid out of the OVC, 37 and 21. They went 22 and eight in league play. 12 game winning streak trails only. Central Michigan, who has won 18 in a row. They've got nine walk-off wins, including five in the last 12 games. This is a confident baseball team that wasn't playing great at the beginning of the year, but they've switched, uh, flipped a switch in their last 30 or so games. Yeah, absolutely. 26, I think, in seven and since uh, late April. So, I mean, yeah, they're playing with as, as much confidence as you can have. In that lineup right there, Alex Webb, Nick Gaddis, the two, three, four hitters right there, 308, 333. You know, that's the big RBI guys, Webb with 56. So, if you get it on, these guys are driving you in. Gaddis has got 13 home runs. Strachan has got 10 home runs. Jim Case head coach of Jacksonville State. He's got his name on the stadium now. Three-time Ohio Valley Conference Coach of the Year, 05, 08, and again this season, 2019. In fact, he is one of two coaches in the entire country that are active currently that have their name on the stadium. Do you know the other? You cheated. You read the notes. Well, I've, I've had Jacksonville State this year, and I just don't remember the dang answer. Mike Martin. I was going to say it has Florida to be Mike State. Martin. Retiring this year, Jim Case, 40th year in college baseball as a player, assistant coach, or head coach. On the mound tonight for Ole Miss, their Friday night starter all season long, Will Etheridge, 6'5", 240-pound junior out of Lilburn, Georgia. Etheridge on the year 6-6 six and six with a 2.94 earned run average. Yeah, he's your true ace, the fastball 88 to 93. Maybe a little bit more. Big thing, though, is the movement. And coaches talk about it with a little movement. Also makes it seem like it's a little bit more velocity as well. 
Trey Kirkland leads things off from Jacksonville State and takes strike one. Eight to four earlier, Clemson won game one over Illinois. Winner of this game will meet Clemson tomorrow night here at Swayze Field. All lifted into the right center field gap, and that's going to fall on a chance for extra bases for Trey Kirkland. He will cruise into second with a leadoff double to start the ball game for the Gamecocks. It's about as good as you can yeah, draw it up when you're the visiting team in the four seed in front of 10,000 on the road. Kirkland says, I'll take that pitch. You give me a little strike one, I, and you go back trying to get strike two, fastball up in the zone. I like the opposite field hit, too, going the other way with it. Saw a fast start earlier in game one today with Clemson scoring in the top of the first, Illinois scoring in the bottom of the first. Here's Cole Frederick. Sophomore from Tuscaloosa. Ole Miss and their powder blues, which I think they've decided are the good luck uniforms. I guess all somewhere 14 and 5 this year wearing the powder blues. I'd roll with it too. Ground ball up the middle. Stopped by Gray Kessinger from his knees in time to get the out at first. That is a Brooks Wallace finalist at shortstop for Ole Miss. Talk about an unbelievable play, especially just to be able to get to the ball, lays out, thinking if he doesn't stop it, that's a run. But not only does he lay out, stop the ball, makes a play from his knees, man. What a play. Great Kessinger, the junior shortstop from right here in Oxford. First team, all SEC. Kirkland moves over to third. Alex Webb, ground ball to short. That will get a run home. Backhand by Kessinger. Good scoop at first base by Zabowski for the second out of the inning. But Jacksonville State, quick run to start this ball game. Dillard Olenek and Servideo in the outfield. Tyler Keenan at third. You've seen Greg Kessinger a couple of times. Jacob Adams, Cole Zabowski on the right side. Cooper Johnson catching. He has thrown out 45% of the runners that have tried to steal on him this year. Say that again. 45%. Yeah, they're talking about him being big league catcher ready right now, the tools he has behind the plate. Gannis with a big cut comes up empty on the off-speed pitch. 45%. Lead-off double for Trey Kirkland, ground out by Frederick to short, got him to third. Alex Webb on the ground out, picks up his 57th RBI of the season. Now Nick Gaddis with two outs, and the base is empty. The 0-2 from Etheridge. Jacksonville State making its fifth all-time NCAA tournament appearance, first since 2014. Second that time that they have played in a regional here in Oxford, also have been to Atlanta, Tuscaloosa, and Auburn. Gamecocks looking for their first ever win in postseason play as a Division I team. Oh and eight in their previous four regionals. That's the team definitely not. I mean, when they say they faced six SEC teams so far this year, so it's not a team that's going to come in, you know, scared of the atmosphere. They've been in these types of atmosphere. Now, maybe not this one, but they played at Alabama, at Auburn, at Georgia. A couple of wins against SEC teams as well. They beat Auburn in their home park. Also got a win against Georgia. Got about a top eight national seed. Beat them eight to seven in 11 innings in early May.
playing a Tuesday or Wednesday night midweek game, though. A little bit different. A little bit different. You're, you're right. Um, you know, when we say see crowds like this, not many places in country see crowds like this. There's about six or seven schools that do. Lead-off double and then three ground balls. Jacksonville State on the board, up one to nothing as we go to the bottom of the first. One to nothing, Jacksonville State gets a lead-off double. Scores on an R, uh, ground out by Alex Webb. Trey Kirkland gave the Gamecocks an early lead in the ball game. Ole Miss coming to the plate. The Rebels had a nice run in the SEC tournament. On the verge of elimination against Arkansas, scored two in the eighth. Parker Caracy came in to get the save and get the win. The next game saw another comeback victory. Great Kessinger's home run would be the breakthrough against Georgia, won 5-3 to three against the Bulldogs. And in the championship game against Vanderbilt, Ole Miss jumped out to a big lead early. Six runs in the first, led the ball game at 9-1. to one. Vanderbilt clawed back, tied it at 10, and then got a walk-off win in the bottom of the ninth inning, 11-10. to 10. It was the run, though, in Hoover that got Ole Miss into this position to host a regional They've scored three or more runs 52 different times this year. The strikeout to walk ratio is very good as well. 38 and 26 overall with 16 and 14 this year in the SEC. Yeah, I agree with you, Richard. That, that, without that run in the conference tournament, they are definitely not hosting, and they might be a two or three seed somewhere else. So a big run, nice, nice tournament, and all of a sudden you get to play at home in front of this kind of crowd. Thomas Dillard made the move into the leadoff spot in the last weekend of the regular season. It has paid dividends. Kessinger, Keenan, and Zabowski, top four in the order. First pitch, ground ball, right side, base hit for Thomas Dillard. Split the difference between Stratchan and Brown, first and second. And a good start for Ole Miss. They're facing a good pitcher, Ole Miss is tonight, and Garrett Farmer. 102 thirds innings. He's making his 16th start of the year. The junior from Huntsville, Alabama. 104 strikeouts on the season, just 12 walks. Yeah, absolute workhorse. Strike thrower, pitches ahead in the count. With a fastball, not overpowering, but he does pitch on the corners. And biggest thing is pitching ahead of the count will keep you in advantage counts. Ground ball, left side base hit. Thomas Dillard hit it through the right side. Greg Kessinger hits it through the left side. Ole Miss has first and second, nobody out. Crow, Kirkland, and Adams in the outfield for the Gamecocks. Cole Frederick, the third baseman, with Alexander and Brown up the middle. Stratchan, the first baseman. Nick Gaddis catching, and Garrett Farmer on the mound. And yeah, we mentioned the 967 fielding percentage, already 74 errors. So if they're able to make some plays, I'm telling you, the offense is good enough. They can keep themselves in the game with Farmer being as good, but. Right now, Ole Miss jumping all over the fastball. But, I mean, when you think about it as a pitcher, it's a four-hole special, a six-hole special, nothing really hit hard. Continue getting ground balls. Goes off speed to Tyler Keenan, catches the corner and gets strike one. That's how you keep him from going on that first pitch fastball. Don't throw it. Tyler Keenan, 60, runs batted in on the year. That's sixth best in the SEC, top 50 nationally. Former is a guy that will change speeds a lot, so that's something that he's going to do. He's going to pitch backwards, which would mean starting off speed, finishing you off with the fastball instead of breaking balls. Like normally you think start fastball, finish with breaking balls. A walk-off win for North Carolina in Chapel Hill after a long weather delay. They had a safety squeeze try that didn't work. Had a guy get in a rundown between third and home. Thrown away. Winning run scores. <laughs> North Carolina went 7-6 to six over UNC Wilmington. That's Tennessee small. and Liberty will play early tomorrow. The small little execution things. I think he got out of it and then a simple little rundown and messed you up. Now you fall in that 0-1 bracket. So they've pushed game two in the Chapel Hill Regional to tomorrow. So Tennessee and Liberty will play tomorrow morning at 11 Eastern. They'll have an elimination game and then a winner's bracket game later in the day. Three balls and a strike to Tyler Keenan.
And the bases are loaded. Dillard at third, Kessinger at second, Keenan at first, nobody out with Cole Zabowski coming to the plate. Ole Miss head coach Mike Bianco in his 19th season in Oxford. School record 747 wins, third most wins of any coach in the SEC ever. He trails only Ron Polk and Skip Burtman. He has led Ole Miss to 16 regional appearances in his 19 seasons. Zabowski went with the swing hard on the first pitch I get approach. <laughs> swing hard in case you hit it, but that was a nice job by Farmer knowing, hey, base is loaded. They're going to come up early in the count, try to be aggressive, so he goes breaking ball down. Zabowski's able to lay off, though, puts him in a much tougher situation. That was only the 13th walk of the season by Garrett Farmer. Jacksonville State got a leadoff double in the top of the first and then three straight ground outs. Alex Webb's ground out to short scored Trey Kirkland to put the Gamecocks ahead 1-0. Single for Dillard, single for Kessinger, a walk to Keenan, and now Cole Zabowski at the plate, 1-1, one one, with nobody out of the bases loaded. This ball lined to the opposite way, a base hit. Dillard comes home to score station to station baseball as everybody moves up 90 feet. Zabowski just not trying to do too much fastball away, just tailing away. You see that ball sinking, and Zabowski just keeps the head on the bat right there, driving in the six hole, little line drive. Not trying to do too much when you can head station to station. No reason to push it, but nobody out. And Jim Case out to talk to Garrett Farmer, probably just to settle him down a little bit. When I, you mentioned that early on that, you know, Jacksonville State has played in some SEC stadiums this year. But when you look at it, Farmer being the Friday night guy, he doesn't pitch on those games. Those are usually midweek, so this is one, maybe one of the biggest atmospheres he's pitched in, but you're right, trying to hold him, trying to settle him down. Fourth best strikeout to walk ratio in the country. Seventh best in number of walks per nine innings. And look at that whip. Walks plus hits per innings pitched. He is sub one, and that is elite. Yeah, anytime you're anytime you're one, you, usually you're looking at one, one, five and below is really, really good. But to be under one, this inning is going to hurt him a little bit. <laughs> First four guys reach base. Single, single, walk, RBI single, and now Ryan Olenek at the plate. And Olenek hits a fly ball to left. Did he get enough? Crow gets to the track and makes the catch just shy of the warning track. Runners tag, and he got an out at second base. Kessinger comes home to score. Keenan trying to go second to third is out on the play. It's now two to one. Boy, off the bat, I thought that might have had a shot. You see Carson Crow finally let me try to find that fence. I'm swiping at it. And then right here, it makes a great throw. So, I mean, you talk about bases loaded, no outs, already one run in. You get an unconventional sack fly double play, but now it's only a 2-1 ball game. So, for Grant, for Garrett Former, that's one of those things that, hey, that's a big play right there by Carson Crow. Now Kevin Graham trying to keep the inning alive. Takes a strike. That's the one pitch that Garrett Farmer has had success with, working that outside corner to the left-handed hitter. Well, I mean, you don't have the numbers he has by pitching in the middle part of the plate. I, mean, <laughs> I can promise you, you don't, if you pitch the middle part of the plate, you're going to get hit. So he needs to work the corners, and the, his biggest thing is changing speeds. Zabowski gets back in. And it's not just fastball to change up or fastball to breaking ball. It's changing speeds, harder breaking ball, softer breaking ball. And that's, how, that's when you truly learn how to pitch is when you can change speeds on all your pitches. Ole Miss had bases loaded, nobody out. They've scored two runs to take the lead here in the bottom of the first. Sacrifice fly from Zabowski was the first, or excuse me, from Olenek was the first out of the inning. Zabowski now goes to second on a balk. But Tyler Keenan 
Got thrown out trying to go second to third on the tag. Had him call for the ball. Watch the feet. It looks like the I don't know if the back foot moved first. If that had, I mean, or the back foot did move first, but he also didn't look like he gained ground with that front foot. A nice changeup. When, you, when you're talking about that pickoff as a right-hander, when he spins to move, you can't just replace your feet. You have to gain ground toward first base, and I think that's what they saw. It's the third balk this year by Garrett Farmer. If Farmer gets out of this with just two runs allowed, it's got to feel like a small victory. Two, two. First base open. Kevin Graham has got nine home runs on the year. How careful are you here? Um, I, you think you would be, but a guy that's only walked 13 now. Um, obviously, he's not pitching around many hitters, but you're going to make him definitely hit your pitch. Look for probably a breaking ball or even all speed pitch. That way, you know if he does, he's going to hit mine. If not, then. A walk wouldn't be too bad. Kevin Graham has struck out 37 times this year in 137 at bats. The full count stays up. Second walk of the inning. Run with the 3-2 change up and see that coming in at 77 miles an hour. That is one of the better 3-2 pitches. If you can control it, throw it for a strike because the hitter sees ball in the middle part of the plate, jumps out there, and the change of speed usually gets him out in front, but that ball started off a little bit up in the zone. That at bat right there. Sorry about that, Rich. That at bat right there extended that pitch count because even after all this had happened, he was he started that at bat with only like 10 pitches. So by being able to get that walk, extend this inning, gets his pitch count a little bit higher. Now Cooper Johnson to the plate. Garrett Farmer had an arm injury after three starts in 2017, so two years ago. Missed the rest of that season. But he's been a mainstay of the rotation for the last two years. He's number one all time at Jacksonville State with 267 career strikeouts. Pop down the right field line, long run, and it'll go into the seats. Not one of those nights where it's going to hit in the stands and kick around a bunch of empty seats. Be hard pressed to find an empty one. If they are empty, they're standing around the concourse trying to get a better view. First and second, two down. Cooper Johnson named the second team all SEC catcher. Also the SEC all defensive team. He's off the fastball. It's up and away. The count evens at two and two. Jacksonville State got on the board top of the first inning with a single run. A leadoff double from Trey Kirkland ended up coming to, around to score after a couple of ground ball outs. All this is answered with two runs in the bottom of the first. Full count coming here, and now the base runners will get a head start. You see right there Nick Gaddis as he caught that ball down and away. He, he looked at Garrett Formas like, you know, pointed to him like, come to me. You're falling off. You're, you know, you're spinning off the thing. Bring it straight to me. It just looks like Garrett Formers out there just trying to feel his way through this inning instead of trusting his stuff. One of the biggest things we can do wrong as pitchers is fly open and 
I think that's what Nick Gaddis is seeing from behind the plate. Breaking ball throws Cooper Johnson for strike three. It could have been a whole lot worse for Jacksonville State. In the bottom of the first, we played an inning. Ole Miss two, Gamecocks one. Back with you in Ox. Is that Mike Rooney? Oh, no, he's got more hair than Mike Rooney. I just saw the bucket hat and immediately thought Roons. Grills going, big crowd, packed house at Swayze Field. One inning in to game number two. Ole Miss leading Jacksonville State earlier. Clemson beat Illinois 8 4 in game one of the Oxford Regional. Richard Cross, Lance Cormier. Played at Alabama, big leaguer. Glad to have you along on a Friday night postseason baseball. First pitch strike from Will Etheridge to Isaac Alexander. Good look there. That's a 90 mile an hour fastball, but you saw the life on it, the run I mean, on the arm side. It looked like it came back across the plate six inches. They used to have a coach say every inch of movement is like one to two miles an hour. It seems like on the fastball. I mean, that ball's coming boring across the plate. And then the elevated fastball for a three pitch strikeout from Will Etheridge. Well, that was a good setup right there. It goes breaking ball for a strike. Then a fastball for a take, and you know their aggressiveness is going to come. Climbs the ladder. Will Ethers does a nice job. Makes that a competitive pitch. Sometimes you'll see guys just really throw that ball over the guy's head. It's like the guy doesn't even have to think about it. That's a nice pitch. First strikeout of the night for Will Etheridge. Strikeout numbers for the season are good, but they don't blow you away. 68 strikeouts in 82 and two-thirds. The 2-9-4 ERA will blow me away, though, in the SEC. I'll take that. I don't need strikeouts because if most of the time those guys are striking out a lot of hitters, the pitch count's going to get up. They're not going to pitch deep into the game. Ethan Small of Mississippi State might be an exception. That's <laughs> true. SEC Pitcher of the Year. 150-plus. Looking to catch Eric Dubos. Something about those big lefties at State. He's about 24, 25 strikeouts behind the Mississippi State career record. That's a lot of strikeouts in a year, though. Alex Strachan, 10 home runs on the year for Strachan, the sophomore from Madison, Alabama. Second on the team in long balls. Jammed him there. Another nice pitch by Ather is that fastball just coming in. Just trust your movement, keeping those hitters from getting out over the plate. I said we talked about that in the first game uh, earlier. One of the nice fastballs in. You got to be able to pitch in to keep the, the hitters from extending those arms. Two two. And that win against Georgia, Strachan had a big ball game, drove in three runs. Finds this one deep and fouled out the right field line. To back strikeouts in the second inning for Will Etheridge as Strachan goes down swinging. The ESPN networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with this weekend's regional coverage on ESPN 2, ESPN U, SEC Network, and ESPN 3. Whip around coverage available through ESPN 3, the bases loaded channel. All coverage 
you're available to you on the ESPN app. This ball hits softly on a line to short. Ray Kessinger makes the grab at Jacksonville State. Goes one, two, three in the top of the second. You're watching the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Oxford Regional Game 2 happening right now. Earlier today, Clemson 8-4 over Illinois. Pushes Illinois into an elimination game tomorrow, 12 o'clock local time. Clemson awaits the winner of tonight's game between Ole Miss and Jacksonville State. That one gets started tonight, uh, tomorrow night, 7 Eastern, 6 Central here in Oxford. Anthony Servideo leads off, takes strike one. Sophomore from Jupiter, Florida. Freshman All-SEC a year ago. Quickly behind in the count, 0-2. Bill Fisher, the home plate umpire, Mike Morris, Tim Vesey, and Ramon Armendariz on the base paths. Strike three called. Fastball throws Servideo in the inside corner. That's back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the first and start the second. Yeah, I mentioned it looked like he was trying to feel his way through that inning right here. This is, this is Garrett Former. This is the one you see right there, fastball land. He's a guy that's going to move the ball in and out and probably going to rack up, in, uh, I bet, one of those, hundred, uh, those 104 strikeouts. A lot of them are looking, especially on that fastball in. He's a guy that if, if he gets a little bit of the plate, I mean, like I said, if, if that plate gets extended by the home plate umpire, he, he could start to roll because I mean, he knows where he's throwing it. He, the first inning, he was just missing by a little bit. Mm. If he gets that pitch, it's going to be tough because if you can get that one and the one away, it'll be a tough night. Delivered a first pitch strike to eight of the first nine hitters in the game. We talked about it in the open. He pitches ahead in the count. That's his game. You can't – he doesn't have the stuff to fall behind a lot of hitters to battle back. Pop up by Jacob Adams, shallow center field, Trey Kirkland. Two down. Almost got two runs on three hits in the first inning. Mike Bianco's team had the bases loaded with nobody out. Sacrifice fly from Ryan Olenek scored the second run of the inning. Keenan tried to go Second to third, tagging up. He was thrown out. Almost gave away an out there. Here's Thomas Dillard. I think you said it right right there. They gave away an out. That's something where the, the bats were hot, the momentum was there. That was a true momentum shift back to Jacksonville State, even though they didn't have the lead. Left-handed hitters for Ole Miss moving toward a point where they've got to make an adjustment and protect that outside corner. A little able to hold up. Well, just as you said that, I watched Thomas Dillard go from normal part of the box. He had the toes on the line. Watch when he gets back in that box, how close he gets to home plate. I mean, look, those toes are on that line. He's like, I'm not going to go out there. I'll just, I'll just reach out there. I'm going to challenge him to blow that fastball in on me. Two and two now to Dillard. Thomas Dillard's got 10 home runs on the year, but he just raced out of the gates. He had nine home runs in the first five, six weeks of the season. Swings and misses there. He has only one home run since March 26th. Three of the last four Ole Miss hitters have struck out against Garrett Farmer. We go to the top of the third, Swayze Field. 
in Oxford, Mississippi, Ole Miss and Jacksonville State. Second game of the day, Clemson winning earlier today. Tight games around the country. We've also seen some blowouts. So I guess what you would expect for the opening day of regional play. Devin Brown, eight hole hitter, bats first for Jacksonville State, swings and misses. Lead off double from Trey Kirkland, six in a row, retired by Will Etheridge. Lifted into center. Ryan Olenek, one down. TCU, one of the teams that some people questioned whether or not they deserve to be in the tournament, playing against the Cal Bears in Fayetteville, the Fayetteville Regional. TCU's up 6-1 to one in the sixth. I think they should what. It was the last four in, wasn't it? Florida State, uh, Duke. Both of those teams have already won. Florida State won as a three right. seed in Athens. Duke beat Texas A&M as a TCU, three seed. And I think the other, the last four in, three of them had already won their games, and the fourth one that you just mentioned, TCU, was winning. So showed that the committee knew what they were talking about. Ash Adams, the nine-hole hitter. Remember a few years ago when Stony Brook got the best of LSU down in Baton Rouge? I do. Not tonight. Not tonight. We're going to miss two and two. LSU up 17 to three in the sixth over Stony Brook. Uh, congratulations to Antoine Duplantis. Three hits today. Ties. Let's make the number 352. Ties Eddie Furnish for the LSU career hits leader. Not Two a bad guy to catch. Misses. That also means he's now tied for second all time in the history of the SEC. Jake Mangum hit King in the Southeastern Conference. Slow roller to short. Kessinger hurries the throw. Two down. More coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets go to NCAA.com. Other school we were talking about was Michigan. Michigan beat Creighton 6-0. There you go. You saw the movement on Etheridge's fastball. Watch this ball just right in on the hands. Bam, right off the knuckles. It's a jam shot. It's a good pitch. You a two-seam guy? Yeah, I'm a two-seam. It was sinker, sinker cutter, more or less. Not quite a slider, a sinker cutter. College now, it was more four seam curveball. And then try to develop, as you develop into the big leagues, the strike zone smaller. My curveball was a big curveball, so it wouldn't quite, it was hard to throw it for a strike. If a hitter took it, it wouldn't get called a strike, then I fall behind things. So that's why you're starting to see more sliders and cutters so you can throw strikes, you know, and, and not have to, you can get it in the strike zone still with a little break. You didn't generally get the extension of the big leagues that you're seeing tonight, did you? <laughs> Absolutely not. not. Not unless your name's Greg Maddox, right? right? Uh, you get it in college, you, you, especially if you show you throw the ball where you want to. Swing and a miss. Nine straight retired by Will Etheridge since the leadoff hitter of the game got a double two to one as we go to the bottom of the third. Two to one, Ole Miss leads headed to the bottom of the third over Jacksonville State. The Oxford Regional paired up with the Fayetteville Regional. Earlier today, Arkansas wins over Central Connecticut State. No trouble for the Razorbacks, 11 to five. They'll play at home tomorrow night against the winner of Cal and TCU. Currently, TCU leading that game six to one over the, oh, they've added to it. It's now nine to one. Yeah, they put up a six spot in the top of the sixth inning. TCU, one of the last four in, highest RPI of a large team this year at 59. But 
RPI doesn't always tell the entire story. A year ago, you had Washington, the Huskies out of the Pac-12, get in as an at-large with an RPI in the low 60s. You know what they did three, two weeks later? Uh... Joe Wayne House took him single-handedly to the World Series. That, right? uh, Put that, him on his back. I, I think that's a good way to describe it. Yeah, you find the right team at the right time, you get hot, man, and just you, you keep rolling. So a lot of times you just got to get in the tournament. Once you get in, then you catch fire, you can go as long as you want. Two balls and a strike to Gray Kessinger. Three and one now. This ball pretty well hit, but foul. Kessinger out in front of that. There's Don Kessinger, six-time Major League Baseball All-Star. He can play shortstop. Did so at a high level at Ole Miss. Two-sport All-American at Ole Miss. Ray's dad, Kevin, played here. Ray takes a walk. That's the third walk of the game, and I think Farmer thought that he had the strikeout. I think that was the – I'm okay, like, as, as a pitcher, don't get me off the plate, but give me this pitch right there. That might have been a little bit low. low? Think, yeah, Gaddis makes it look better, but live, boy, I, Let's see where it crosses right here. <laughs> That's close. I'd rather have that pitch, even as a hitter. I'd rather you call that on me than the two or three inches off the plate. Because I can do something with that as a hitter. I can't do anything with the ball off the plate. The three walks by Farmer early ties the most he's had in any game this season. into the game with just 12 walks all season long in 102 thirds innings. Fly ball to right. If that stays fair, that is way gone. It is fair and it is way gone. Home run number 14 of the year for Tyler Keenan. Drives in his 61st and 62nd of the season. And Ole Miss is in front 4-1. to They're playing it right now. You dropped a bomb on me. That ball, like you said, it was absolutely crushed right in the happy zone. Tyler Keenan. The only question, was it fair? And it was fair. That ball clears the stadium. And the showers come. There's a little juice in the building tonight. There, there's definitely some excitement. Well, Zabowski rips it foul down the right field line. Towering shot by Tyler Keenan. Three pitch strikeout to Cole Zabowski, first out of the inning. Saw Don Kessinger a second ago, not only great player in his own right, but was coach here at Ole Miss. Coached the 1995 team to the Atlantic One Regional in Tallahassee. Team that David DeLucci was on, was an All-American on that team. Yeah, we get to walk up to the stadium, big DeLucci banner right on the top of the stadium. I said, that's how you roll here at Ole Miss, huh? This ball lined to second by Olenek, but right to Brown. Hit it into the teeth of the defense. Brown was shaded a couple of steps up the middle. Tough outs as a baseball player. You know it's so hard to hit. You finally square one up, and it's like, oh, oh that's an out. Go back to the dugout. And how about from your perspective? You're standing on the mound. 
and you give up an absolute laser just right to your guy. Squeeze it. No big deal. No big deal. Is like, that's like a swinging bun. A pop fly routine is an out as an out. As a hitter, though, boy, that can mess with you, especially, I mean, think of Olenek. He had one to the warning track in his first at bat, probably missed a grand slam in the first inning by about three feet, and then he comes back, squares another one up on the screws even harder, and you're over two sitting down. Tough game, right? Walk and a two-run home run to start the third inning. Strikeout and a line out from Zabowski to Linux since and Kevin Graham is at the plate walked his first time up Now in spring training Those are the outs you want you get the game keep continues to go by faster you make sure hey I'm swinging the back good. I'm seeing the ball. Well, but you don't want to you know make these long innings So that's what you got to do Yeah, 25 pitch in you know, 25 in it pitch inning in spring training no no good no you got to go up there swinging within one or two pitches the first you got to get you know get the bat going and especially if you square a ball like that you're like all right you feel good about yourself nice rally by Garrett Farmer after the two run homer he gets strikeout line out strikeout Ole Miss now up four to one three innings in the books game two of the day in the Oxford Regional Ole Miss for two in the first, two in the third, thanks to Thomas Diller. Mammoth home run down the right field line. Excuse me, Tyler Keenan. Big lefties. Big swing lefties. Keenan got every bit of it. Oh, I man. should get his name right. <laughs> Cole Frederick leads off for Jacksonville State in the top of the fourth. I can promise you Garrett Farmer remembers who hit that one. <laughs> Richard Cross, Lance Cormier with you. Will Etheridge making his 16th appearance of the year, 15 starts. He actually pitched in relief in the SEC Tournament Championship game. An inning and two thirds. This ball pretty well hit. Left center field gap. Olenek on the run. He will chase it down just shy of the wall. Frederick got almost all of that one. That is 10 in a row. Retired by Will Etheridge. Always good when you can have a center fielder that can go get the ball in the gap like Ryan Olenek. Etheridge is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Thank you very much. I'll take it. A year ago, Will Etheridge was used primarily as a long reliever. Saw a lot of four, five, even six inning appearances from him, but not as a starter. Made that transition to game one pitcher every weekend. Missed a start in week two with a blister. Think about how tough that would be. You, Ole Miss had to replace the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday starter. You've been the long reliever, so most likely you're pitching in a blowout game or a guy got hurt early or something just couldn't do it. And now all of a sudden you're asked to be the Friday night starter in what could, you know what is arguably the toughest conference where you're facing almost a first rounder every Friday night. And he's all stepped up with a 6-6, six and 2-9-4 six, ERA. Just off the plate there for a ball and two strikes. Ole Miss had Ryan Rollison a year ago who was drafted in the first round. Went to the Rockies organization. And then also James McArthur, uh, Brady Feigl, who went in the fifth round. James McArthur, who went in the twelfth round. Now evens it two and two to Alex Webb. Picked up his 57th RBI of the year. With the ground down in the first. Those were the three from last year. It's tough to replace, you know, one or two guys. When you have to replace your whole rotation and guys that they weren't one-year starters. Rollison was a two- or three-year starter. Feigl was in that rotation for a long time. So you had some guys that had soaked up and logged a lot of innings for your staff, and all of a sudden you have a freshman and a guy that's been a long reliever hop up, and they've done a nice job. Ground ball to second. 
Adams throws it over there, two down. Mike Bianco will join us from the dugout. When we come back, well, this is the plate in the bottom of the fourth. Eleven straight retired by Will Etheridge since a leadoff double from Trey Kirkland. Nick Gaddis now 0 for 1 with the ground out. Two strikes, couldn't catch up to the elevated fastball. Like to me, it looks like the ball's coming out of his hand. Looks like it, I, I'm looking at the gun going 86, and it's 91 with some movement. It just is. Like, I mean, like, it's not blowing you away, cheese, but it's just easy. It's just nice movement, nice mechanics. It just explodes out of his hand because it looks like it'd be 85, 86. Gaddis lays off the breaking ball away. His 13 home runs this year, the most by a Jacksonville State player. Since Austin Stein hit 13 back in 2004. This one to right. Pretty well hit. So video runs it down. No trouble. Jacksonville State goes 1 2 3 in the fourth. Ole Miss leads 4-1 to one over Jacksonville State as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. We're joined by Mike Bianco, head coach of the Rebels in his 19th season in Oxford. Coach, really tough, hard-hitting question. Your team's been playing well the last two weeks, and you've been wearing the same uniforms over and over. Is it powder blues the rest of the way for this Ole Miss baseball team? Yeah, that's a that's a, that's a a difficult question, but, you know, we've played well in them, so you got, you know, I think the guys want to wear them, and so you got to go with what they want. Quick, quick thought on Will Etheridge and what he's been able to do since that leadoff double. No, you're right. And, and really, I'm not sure if it was a bad pitch to the leadoff guy. Uh, just a good job of hitting. But uh, he's been terrific. Been able to work the fastball on both sides of the plate. A good breaking ball, some good change-ups. Well, Coach Bianca, I want to talk about just the crowd and what yeah. this means. It's something that not many college players get to experience this. And what the I know you see this all the time, but this has to be one of the better atmospheres you've been in. Lance, you're right. You know, it, it, it is. We're, we're very fortunate that they love baseball here in Oxford, and uh, the Ole Miss fans really show up. And so, you know, it, it was a great reward to, to be able to host and, and, and be here, uh, but not just for the team, I think for the fans as well. Coach, thanks for your time. All right, guys, thank you. That's Mike Bianco. I don't, he didn't. He didn't fully commit to Powder Blues the rest of the way, did he? I think I, I talked to uh, one of the guys. They said the the um, the pitcher gets to choose, right? Right. And then, but sooner or later, when you are running a winning streak and you're playing good, I think everybody just says it's no doubt it's Powder Blue. Trey Kirkland covered a lot of ground to come catch that pop up. Kind of like when LSU rolled through the. College World Series a couple years with those gold jerseys, and now like that's their their go-to jersey. They think about the Warren Morris home run in like '96. It was like gold jersey from mid-May on. If you were on the opposing team, you didn't love to see those gold jerseys coming in, did you? <laughs> you knew that meant something. <laughs> there was a little bit of an intimidation yeah, factor they pull there. Out the, they pull out the bag, and all of a sudden the gold, you're like, oh, oh man. Are they wearing those like today? That again? They mean business today. Anthony Servideo struck out looking his first time up. I think it's a great look, though. I mean, that's just a it, – it goes really well. I know, you know, they, they'll play it in football. They'll, they'll – Pulled the powder blue jersey and the helmet sometimes, but it is a very classic look on the baseball field.
So there was a time where you had a bunch of big league teams that used the lighter blue as kind of their road uniform. Royals wore, wore it at home. Cardinals had it as the powder blue for a while. Well, I think it was in the 80s, right? You had the Expos, you had the Phillies. The Phillies still do it. I just saw highlights where the Phillies had it. They go with the powder. And the uh, I like the biggest part about this, though, I like this. I like the up look, you know. The stir that's old school right there. That stirrups, that's not socks. You got the sanitary socks underneath. But you I mean that was like the thing. Like you said, you mentioned the Royals, the Cardinals, Expos, the Brewers still do it. Toronto Blue Jays still do it. So I, I love that look. Yeah, most of the time you'll see the kids when they go up now, they'll just wear the, the soccer socks or whatever, the high socks. Yeah. That's old school when you put the stirrups, but you, you'll start to ask them, they're like, it just doesn't stay in the shoe. Full count walk to Servideo, fourth of the game, most in a game this year by Garrett Farmer. That's part of what this Ole Miss offense does. They are a team that walks a bunch. In fact, coming into the game, 15th in the country with 310 walks this year. Yeah, very patient ball club, and, and they not only are patient, they, they put themselves in hitters' counts, and then they're doing damage when they get that pitch in their count. That is the second balk of the game called on Barrett, uh, Garrett Farmer. And that time, the first base umpire, Mike Morris, tapped his shoulder. Yeah, you were looking at the feet earlier. So he, he tapped. Maybe it's the, the, the flinching of the shoulder first. And I don't see anything in the upper body. Now. No, I mean, you don't have to come set. You don't have to come set to pick. You only have to come set to pitch. Sure. Coach Case wasn't very happy. He was halfway to home plate with the hands up, like, give me an explanation of what's going on. So Servideo at second. How about this? Eric Farmer, 17 of 18 batters that he's faced, first pitch strikes. Servideo trying to steal third, and he'll do so without a throw. Huge jump. That jump was all off. Garrett Farmer shows you how big the bulk was, puts him in scoring position, and then Servideo takes it upon himself, man. Like he said, big time jump. Gaddis has no shot. Tough pitch to throw in anyway, but he, he doesn't have a shot. But 17 of 18, first pitch strikes, you think, like, all right. He's going to be rolling now, but still with four walks and already giving up four runs, it's just he's getting ahead, but then he's not staying ahead. He's starting to nibble once he gets ahead. 23 steals and 24 tries this year for Servidia. That's getting done. Trail Jay Charleston at Tennessee. Second behind Charleston. That's a big thing for an offense, though, to be able to get to third base by, by a stolen base with less than two outs. Now you set your guy up, Adams, for an easy RBI. When he's a ground ball to the second baseman, shortstop, he gets picks up a ribby. Going to try to get the play at the plate, and Servideo. Called safe by home plate umpire Bill Fisher. Emphatically called safe by the home plate umpire. Well, Adams gets that ball to stretch and stretch and knows he's coming home right when he gets there. But I think Servideo does a nice job of hustling. He sees the ball right when the reaction is hits the ground. He's going. You think if it's not at the pitcher, I'm going. But the slide to me is the most important thing. Gets it under that foot. We will get a video review. I'll tell you what, home plate umpire Bill Fisher was as <laughs> the best position I think he could have been. He, he was right on top of that. They will connect with the NCAA Video Review Center. These are the things that are reviewable in NCAA tournament games. Fair foul, home run, ground rule, catch, no catch when it's in the outfield. Interference plays, scoring plays, which you've got here. Force and tag plays. Hit by pitch. 
And three reviews in the first game. I think all three requested by Monty Lee, the head coach of Clemson, and, and all three went against them. Not really the result that uh, he was looking for. And for the most part, two of them weren't even close. I think this is going to be another one going against the guy requesting it. Strasher does a nice job of getting rid of the ball. A little tougher throw down the way. If it's a better throw, I think he's, he's, he's getting him. But right there, it looks like the hand gets under the foot. Well, to your point a second there, look where Bill Fisher is situated. He's standing on top of that play, and it's literally happening under his nose. Yeah, a lot of times you'll say, well, I mean, the guy just wasn't in a good position. No, Bill Fisher was in a great position to make that call. Question is, do you have indisputable video evidence to overturn the call that was made on the field? Call can be confirmed, the call stands, or the call is overturned. We will see. Call is confirmed. And it is now five to one. A walk, a balk, a stolen base, and a ground out to first. Our fielder's choice to first. Yeah, there you go, manufactured run. Walk, balk, stolen base. You know, the balk is because the guy can run, so he's trying to keep him close, showing you what speed can do. Something you can't teach. Five earned runs, the most that Farmer has allowed in a game this year. Top of the order, Thomas Dillard. Well, he is all over that plate, challenging him to throw a fastball in. You weren't necessarily looking for those season highs on this stage. You can tell Gaddis just the way he's the way he's talking back to Former after the pitches, it's just not the same guy he's been catching all year. Former just doesn't look like himself. And a hot Ole Miss team can make you do that. Strike three and one. Ole Miss hosting a regional for the ninth time under Mike Bianco. First time was in 2004. They lost their opening game to Western Kentucky. Breaking ball strike, throw to second, not in time. And then they say they got the tag as Jacob Adams went past the bag, lunged back toward the bag, couldn't get the hand on in time. And we're starting to see this more often. The base runners are going there, waiting so late to slide. Their momentum takes them off the bag. We saw it in the first game on a replay and a nice play by the second baseman, Massey from Illinois, kept his foot there. And but right there, you see he slides all the way across the bag. To kind of handle that. You just got to slide a little bit earlier. That way the momentum just, <laughs> you're able to stop on the bag. Second base runner that Ole Miss has lost tonight. And he's safe by a lot at that point, and then he goes way past the bag. Ooh, that might have been a good one to review. Looked like he got under the tag. And then Thomas Dillard is called out on strikes and did not like the call third strike. Five to one after four. Jacksonville State jumped out to a one-nothing lead. Ole Miss now had five to one. Two runs in the first, two in the third, and a run in the fourth. Tyler Keenan got the big hit of the ball game. Two-run home run down the right field line in the third inning. Will Etheridge has been locked in 12 in a row that he has retired. That's been the big story, and that's when, you, when you're ace on the mound, Farmer can't get it done. But it's still, it is only a 5-1 game. But that's just how good Etheridge has been. It, it just seems like it's a much bigger deficit than it is. I mean, Jack State's a team with 70-something home runs coming into the plays. They can put together a string of offense, and they'll put themselves back in the ballgame. Popped up. Jacob Adams backpedaling. Anthony Servideo coming in, and Adams makes the catch.
ESPN Networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with this weekend's regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, the SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage available through ESPN3, the bases loaded channel. All coverage available on the ESPN app. See, we're baseball fans, too. It's not just working. I mean, I have the bases loaded, pulled up on my iPad in front of me. So we've got Dallas Baptist leading Florida in the fifth. I keep Georgia peeking. Tech leading Florida A&M in the seventh. I keep peeking over, over your other computer to watch the iPad. Got a bunch of screens working in here, don't we? We do have some screens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Count some phones going. Yeah. Hey, just keeping, staying up to the no. Stratchin. It's that one low. Two balls and a strike to Alex Stratchin. There we go. Kevin, Kevin there keeping it straight. Computers, iPads, monitors, and whatnot. It's not a bad setup, right? No, it's a really good setup. Two and two. So good of a setup, I forget to watch the game live happening. I'm watching it on the on the uh, TVs. Stretch and able to lay off, doesn't chase that one. That 21 to third without issuing a walk. We'll count. Look at 22 and or 21 and two thirds. Back to back pop outs to second, or at least to the second baseman in shallow right field. Jim Case, head coach for Jacksonville State, also coaches third base, will join us in the bottom of the fifth. Gamecock lineup, they're not even getting good swings anymore. You know, early on they had some hard outs. Now it's just easy outs. You can't sit back because all of a sudden Etheridge is just strike one, strike two, staying in the groove. Carson Crow. Long swing there. And a soft line drive to Kessinger out at shortstop. And he batted to in the second inning. He's got 10 multiple hit games this season. He hits a fly ball to center here. Pretty well hit. Deepest part of the ballpark. I know Linick makes the grab. Ole Miss coming to the plate, bottom of the fifth, up four. Jim Case joins us when we come back. Five to one, Ole Miss leading over Jacksonville State. Jim Case, the head coach of the Gamecocks, joins us from the dugout. Coach, appreciate your time. Five to one deficit, certainly not insurmountable. What's your team got to do to kind of get going? Well, I think we just got to weather the storm, and then we got to find a way to get something going offensively. You know, we got off to a good start, and then he shut us down pretty good. So we it's not like we've been all over the place, but they've done a good job of generating some runs, and we need to get some base runners. No, you've got work to do. We're not going to hold you up. Thanks for stopping by and visiting with Thank us. Thank you. That's Jim Case, head coach of Jacksonville State. Yeah, he's the, he's the pitch caller, so when all of a sudden your pitch is out there, can't really be doing an interview while you're trying to call pitches, so. Yeah, the bat into the dugout. I think if we had held him for one more question, he would have actually given the pitch signal while he I was on he, camera. I know he would have. I mean, that's a true professional. I mean, talking about 40 years, he would have just started talking, given the signs like that. He would continue the interview with the headphones. Great Kessinger. 
Leading off, it's a fly ball to center. Kirkland on the run, shy of the warning track. First down of the inning. Ballpark is playing differently than it did earlier today. In Clem the game with Clemson and Illinois, especially early in that game, all really jumped. A little heavier air at night. That's what it looks like. The flag is absolutely dead. But it, it didn't matter what the wind was doing for this one right here. Tyler Keenan, wham! Little Jumanji right there. Going back. Old school Kenny May? I don't know. Or is that... Is that all the way back to Craig Kilborn, Jumanji? It's something my little my, my son, the 12 year old team, they do. They're home runs, and so they challenged me. Alabama A's back home. Tyler Keenan takes ball two. You, you, you see the reaction from Garrett Farmer, who is a pretty cool customer on the mound and obviously has been wildly successful, not just this year, but in his career. But there's a little frustration that, that you see from him. Well, he does look. I mean, you can tell he's a guy that's very composed. Um, you know, not the start he wanted to when he jumped into a regional, get, you know, career high in walks, career high in run, or season high in walks and runs. Not how he wanted to start. But to me, the makeup of a pitcher, you look at him, you never know if he was winning 5-1 to one or losing 5-1. to one. Fly ball to center field, Kirkland. Gets to the warning track, hit that one to the deepest part of the park, straight away center field. And it's a long, loud out. Now You're, those, like you, you mentioned that line drive to second baseman, you're like, well, it's just another out. That one right there, that you kind of get your heart rate going as a pitcher, like, uh oh, stay in the yard, stay in the yard. Then as it stays in the yard, like, man, I can't do that again, I can't do that again. So that does play a little bit into the psyche of a pitcher. Because of what he did in his last at bat, the uh, the crowd's reaction off the bat, they thought it was another one. But I really like that makeup of not being able to tell. I thought, you know, you try to instill that in all young pitchers. You shouldn't be able to, you know, as somebody walks out of the bathroom going, all right, I haven't seen much of the game. I, I, I just, you know, got to the concession or whatever. I come back out there. Oh, you start to see, oh, you can tell this guy's getting hit hard. That's something that Garrett Farmer has done a nice job with and continue to stay because he knows, look, my offense can score some runs as well. I just got to keep this right here. And like, like Coach K said, weather the storm. Farmer trying to have an easy half inning. When you really get down to it, it is just a four-run lead. Right. And couple guys on a walk here and there and you know got a stretch and one of those big boppers comes up they can put together a big inning but just how good Etheridge has been just the atmosphere the electricity in the park it, it feels like it's more of like an eight nine run lead Obviously, you saw the reaction from Garrett Farmer. That was a hop, a step, a jog, and slam on the brakes. Yeah, that's a pitch he's probably used to getting. It was, to me right there, that's Nick Gaddis's fault as much as he, he framed that just as good as you can do it. frame job by Gaddis. I mean, he, he makes, as a pitcher, when my catcher makes it look like a strike, I'm like, all right, I'll take off. Another full count to Zabowski. Off the glove of Brown. E4. And that will keep the inning alive. You mentioned pitch count earlier, Lance. I mean, that's another one. You, you think you've got a strikeout, you don't get it. And then an error, and the inning gets extended. Yeah, you're looking at 84 pitches. That say, or 85, he takes the strikeout. 
then all of a sudden you get the ground ball. We talked about the the fielding percentage at 967, not making plays. This is a routine ground ball. I know it's a little bit up the middle, but second baseman Devin Brown plays it off to the side. That's a ball you've got to be able to get in front of. Here's Ryan Olenek. 0 for 1. He's got a sack fly, picked up an RBI, 31st of the year. And a line out to the second baseman Brown. I think uh, Farmer thinks Zabowski is a threat to steal. Uh, sometimes as a pitcher, you, you just don't feel comfortable, so a pickoff is just as good as stepping off. Off the glove of the shortstop, Alexander. Gets him a, another ball. He squares up really nicely. Missed a grand slam and hit one on the screws the second. He finally gets a hit after hitting the ball hard three times. Had a conversation yesterday with Ryan Olenek just about some of the injuries that he's fought through. From like the very first workout, first summer he got on campus where he sustained an injury up in his shoulder area. And he's fought through broken fingers and dislocated fingers and Bumps and bruises all over the place. This one rifled into the right field corner. That's down for a base hit. Zabowski comes around to score. Olenek trying to score all the way from first. He does so standing up. A two-run double for Kevin Graham. See what it is. Uh, strike out you think you're out of the inning an era and all of a sudden now the floodgates have started to open for Ole Miss Graham with a big double down the line Olenek scores from first shows you the speed but right here watch this Olenek crosses the plate he knocks the ball out and Graham's over there celebrating with the dugout Coach Clement at third base was really fired up that he didn't see that ball go to the backstop the bullpen Tyler Wilburn left-hander 7 to 1 now Ole Miss leading we talked at the beginning of the show tonight Lance about fielding percentage this year for Jacksonville State 967 they've made 74 errors in 58 games this year you made the point, you can't give a team like Ole Miss extra chances. Especially when they're they're rolling and they feel good about, two, you know, the lineup is that they're squaring balls up. And I mean, that ball was a play, second base, Devin Brown, you know, takes one step and tries to play it off to the side. If he hustles, takes two or three more steps, he's fielding that ball in front like he normally would, being able to play through it. Turned out to be a huge error. Last two runs. Unearned. Again, though, still look at the composure, Farmer. You never know that that happened. He, he thought he had strike three on pitch number 85. Now he's at 90. Cooper Johnson up the middle, base hit. Kevin Graham comes around to score from second, and it's eight to one. An RBI single for the Rebels catcher. Cooper Johnson. Another ball, he just shoots up the box. Not trying to do too much, puts a good swing on it. And just out of the reach of the shortstop, picks up another run. Makes that lead eight to one. It's not Garrett Farmer's night. And it's an interest. You look at this Ole Miss baseball team. They lost 
six of seven to finish the regular season. They were swept by their in-state rival, Mississippi State. They lost a road game against Arkansas State, a game they led in the ninth inning, and lost the first two of the series against Tennessee on the road. Won the final day of the regular season. Had to play in the elimination game on Tuesday of the SEC tournament. Won that. Lost on Wednesday, and then won on Thursday and Friday and Saturday. Played six games in six days. And Mike Bianco told us when we visited with him earlier today that somewhere along the way, they just kind of refound themselves and started having fun again. And that can happen in baseball, like he said. You know, after going to LSU, winning their first series, and you know, he said, God knows how long he is, but he was the 80s, and scoring like nine, 17, 19 runs, he goes, we were on top of the world, and the players thought they were on top of the world. And all of a sudden, they go through that other thing, you know, and it shows you what baseball can do, can truly humble you as a player and as a coach. And now thinking, hey, we can't even buy one. What are we going to do? And he said, it really didn't even know what it was, but something just clicked, and he said, it started having fun. You're talking about six games in six days? Six games that started before three o'clock in the you know in the daytime. I mean that's all morning and afternoon games in the hot sun. I think it was Wednesday at the SEC tournament, the third game of the day. It was 94 degrees at first pitch. It was the hottest temperature at first pitch of any game that's ever been played in the SEC tournament. Well, I took my sons that day too. Oh, I'm glad good, I left. Good day to choose. I, I, right? I left. Actually, I, I, we went to the the end of the first game, saw the Arkansas Ole Miss game, and then left. So that was good. We got out before it was 94. Since Garrett Farmer thought he had that called third strike, he's given up three hits. There's been an error, and he's thrown 13 additional pitches, now sitting at 97. He was at 84 pitches at that point. Maybe the most important element of the SEC tournament run for Ole Miss was the reemergence of Parker Caracy. Absolutely. He had had three disastrous outings prior to being called on, and in fact, in the Tuesday game, in that must-win game to stay in the tournament, Ole Miss went to Ryan Olenek to close out the first game. Then Parker Caracy pitches on Wednesday, or excuse me, on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and picks up three straight saves. Maybe that's the thing that he needed. Hey, look, oh, wait up. My spot is no longer my spot. Kind of challenged him a little bit, but they need him in the back of that bullpen. Full count to Servideo. Pretty well hit on the run. Adams, that ball is gone. Just the second home run of the year from Anthony Servideo. He got all of that one. You're right, he did. He gets a pitch down the middle, a little bit up, almost felt high. He even knows it gives us a little back flip. Big two-run homer. Shows you how big that error was. Add on two more from that. Still unearned. Dugout loves it too, man. They know when a guy like that hits a home run and that had, had been able to experience that, see the showers go up again. Ole Miss leading 10 to 1, bottom of the fifth inning over Jacksonville State. And the Gamecocks will make a pitching change. We'll take a timeout. Rebels up nine. Garrett Farmer's night is over four and two thirds, eight hits, five earned runs, four walks. Both of those are season highs. He gives up a total of 10 runs, but only half of them earned. New pitcher in the game, Tyler Wilburn, junior from. You got to help me out. Is it Helena or Helena, Alabama? Helena. Helena, Alabama. Helena, Arkansas. Helena, Alabama. <laughs> 17th appearance of the year for Wilburn. 23 strikeouts, just six walks on the year. Ole Miss has scored in double digits for the 19th time this season, and all nine in the batting order tonight have reached safely for Ole Miss.
Jacob Adams, eighth hitter of the inning. He's the only guy looking for that first hit. Look at those. I mean, it's everybody has one hit. So the top eight guys have one hit. That's why you have eight hits. No, it's not. It's not like you're getting production from just one guy. It's everybody throughout the lineup, and that's got to make a coach happy. You see the whole lineup producing like this. I didn't realize that. There's nobody with two hits. One through nine. It's got two hits <laughs> no. in the game. And one to Jacob Adams. Flew out to center in the second inning, picked up an RBI on a fielder's choice in the fourth. And a walk. Wilburn walks the first batter that he faces. A nightmarish bottom of the fifth inning for Jacksonville State. Kessinger and Keenan flew out to deep center field. To start the inning. Looks like it might be an easy half inning for Garrett Farmer. He thought he had Cole Zabowski struck out. Did not get the call. Zabowski extended the at bat with a couple of foul outs or foul balls. Hits one to the second baseman. Brown couldn't field it. Since then, single, two run double, single, two run home run, pitching change and a walk. single to start the game. He struck out twice since. Once swinging, once looking. He stayed a little farther off the plate than he was when he was swinging from the left-handed side. Yeah, left-handed, he was all over the plate. I think it was just maybe more of a different pitcher and how Farmer was going to attack him on the left side, knowing as he switched to the right side, lefty looking at that breaking ball coming in on him, so he wants to give him a little bit of room. Two and two now to Dillard. Fifth meeting all time between Ole Miss and Jacksonville State. The Rebels have won the previous four. Last time these two teams met in the 2014 Oxford Regional. Dillard held up. That's a pretty good pitch, regardless of the swing. Almost won that game in 2014, 12 to 2. They lead 10 to 1 tonight. Dillard stays alive with a foul tip. This is one of the toughest spots to pitch in when you've got a team that, for the most part, is running to the bat rack. In a 10-1 game, everybody, you know, there's nothing, there's no more pressure now. Each at bat is you go up there relaxed, taking hacks like that. It's tough to pitch when it when the guy's up there gangster hacking on you. Top spin on that one. Oh, he's trying to get the head out. The head is coming out. He he wants to join that home run party. You gotta backspin that though, right? True. You have to get the head out. We saw some impressive BPs yesterday in the practice day for these two teams, or for uh, for all four teams. Ole Miss practice first. They went in order of seed. Clemson had some guys yesterday and today during BP that put on a show which one was the most impressive you saw Grayson Bird hit one over the batter's eye straight away center field didn't he 
He's got some pop. There's no doubt about that. He showed up some pop today, too. Kept one inside the fair pole. Yeah. Cole Zabowski hit a couple of pretty impressive ones during Ole Miss's practice. This one the opposite way, but off the end of the bat for Dillard. Fly out to end the inning. Nine Rebels come to the plate. Anthony Servideo goes deep for the second time this year. Boy, look at the showers going. Ole Miss puts up a five spot, opens up a monster 10 to 1 lead. NCAA Regional Baseball is brought to you by Capital One. Packed house tonight in Oxford, Mississippi. We got started with Clemson and Illinois earlier today. Clemson won that game 8 to 4. Ole Miss in front of Jacksonville State 10 to 1. A lot of baseball to play here, but looks like we might be headed toward a Clemson Ole Miss matchup tomorrow night in a 1 0 game. Will Etheridge. Pretty economical working here in the top of the sixth inning, and that economy continues. One pitch, one out in the sixth. He's also going to say consistent, too. Right there, 11, 11, 11 12, 12 11, 11, 11, 14. <laughs> what was he thinking on that 14 pitch inning? Trying to get a couple strikeouts, probably. Lance, he gave up a leadoff double to start the game. Trey Kirkland got every bit of a fastball out over the plate, drove it the opposite way, one hop the wall. He got three ground outs in a row after that and hasn't looked back. Well, that, that's when, when you start coming up in baseball as you're learning, you know, one of the biggest things that is taught and tried to ingrain to you is it move on to the next pitch, the next pitch, the next batter. Because after that first batter, you're like, oh, shoot, this is how I'm going to start the game. If you let that play in your head, it's going to affect the next thing. So obviously, Will Esters didn't. He's coming, what, how many in a row now? Six, 16. 16 in a row. I mean, so. That's just moving on to the next batter. And even if he still gave up the run going, all right, that's not how I wanted to start off the regional, put my team in a hole one nothing. Well, his team jumps back, takes the lead. That takes a little bit of the pressure off of him, and then they've continued to pound some runs. And as they extend the lead, he's continued to pound the strike zone and, and, and continue to stay in those advantage counts and keep those economical pitches coming. Did I just see your ERA from 2001 pop up on the screen? 2.3 yeah, that sound right. That was good. No, that was a good year. It was a good year of those bad. Actually, going into the last, going into the last. There it is. I think we play. Uh, um, I'm trying to think. I think I faced Arkansas the last week of that season, and that was a one nine something, and I got hit mm. pretty good. So raised it up. It wasn't quite the minus fives, but there's still some some juiced up bats in those days. It would have been tough to have pitched in 93, 94, oh. 95. That 97 season it was kind of oh. that, I think, the season everybody goes back to. Shallow right. Servideo got a little bit of a late jump and stumbled, but was able to recover and make the catch. I think it was something like, like teams right now, like 90-something home runs is like leading the nation. I think that year LSU had 180, some low, low 180s. Alabama had like, LSU and Alabama played finished one two in the country they played each other in the world series and one had 180 something one had 169 bama had four guys with 20 home runs in their lineup think about that you know four guys in the lineup with 20 home runs that's you, you, there's nowhere to pitch nowhere to hide he is in a groove man what is that joe caruso era? yeah that was the uh i think caruso was there in 97 no it was G.W. Keller, Andy Phillips, Dustin Moore was there. Moore was a 9-0 hitter, hitting 20-plus. One, two, three, go the Gamecocks in the top of the sixth inning. 18 in a row, retired by Will Etheridge. 15th from TD Ameritrade in Omaha. Gray Kessinger leads off, hits it to short. And there is one away in the bottom of the sixth. Alexander over to Strachan. 23rd appearance all time in a regional. 16 of those have come under Mike Bianco. Ninth time that Ole Miss has hosted five trips to the College World Series. Most recently in 2014, Ole Miss hosted a regional and then went on the road to your hometown, Lafayette, Louisiana. Oh, he he the Raging Cajuns, Cajuns in 2014. That was that 
Louisiana Lafayette team that could absolutely Rick. mash. <laughs> Usually known for a pitching program. Every now and then, though, they'll put some bats together. I, forgot they, I knew they played in the Super. I forgot they went to Lafayette. Or you say Lafayette here, right? It's Lafayette County, Mississippi. It's Lafayette, yeah, Louisiana right. there, right? That's right, absolutely. And then you got West Lafayette, Indiana, where Purdue is. Three ways to say the same word. Ball to strike with one out, face is empty. Ole Miss leading by nine over Jacksonville State. Game two of the Oxford Regional. Keenan goes away looking. Nice pitch by Tyler Wilburn. Keenan knew it right exactly right when he caught it. It was like, uh-oh. Painted on the outside part of the plate. Not tonight at Lubbock, Dallas Baptist up seven to two on Florida in the seventh inning. Florida, one of the last teams. Well, they weren't in that last right. four. One of the later teams to get an at-large bid. Florida had only 13 wins in the SEC this year, but really good strength of schedule, really good RPI. And what was it, six wins against Miami and Florida State combined, or five wins against right. Miami and Florida State combined? Really helps when you get to play those caliber teams in the midweek. And Ian, don't I mean you can't sleep on a team like a North Florida, Central Florida, South Florida, all those are midweek games as well. So that helps boost that RPI. But it's definitely not the Florida team that we've seen the last four years. Jam shot. Nice play by Frederick over at third. Six complete. Ole Miss up 10 to 1. Clemson won earlier today, 8 to 4 over Illinois. They are in the 1 0 game tomorrow night. Assistant coaches doing a little scouting. Play an elimination game early tomorrow. Night game will be the winner's side game. Jacksonville State says don't count us out yet. But they've got a long way to go, and Will Etheridge has been really good. Six innings, a hit, one earned run. That came back in the first. Three strikeouts. This one off the chest of Keenan stays with it in time to get the out. Cole Frederick now over three. You know, we we're talking to Coach Bianco, remember earlier about, you know, Clemson didn't quite start their number one. A uh, couple teams that it, that's kind of been the thought process. Who do you start? Do you keep your ace for the second game? That way it can put you in the finals. Coach Bianco said, look, I'm going to treat it like it's been all year. I'm going my man who's been on the Friday nights, Will Etheridge. He's been a just a lockdown guy for us and he's showing you why. He's pitching, you know, he's showing why Coach had that confidence. You have that confidence in me. I'm going to go out there and produce for you, Coach. Mike Bianco calls pitches, signaling them in to Cooper Johnson. I wonder if he had to go back and relearn what their signals were. SEC for the last couple of years has allowed coaches to use walkie-talkies to an earpiece that the catchers got on. So this is this is old school signal in the pitches. Well, I, I tell you stories about that. He comes from the Skip Berkman tree of coaching, and my head coach Jim Wells came from the exact same tree. They actually both coached together. Alex Webb grounds out to Cole Zabowski, three unassisted. Back at what, Northwestern State? Yeah, Coach Bianco coached with under Jim Wells at Northwestern State. Then Jim Wells got the head coach at Alabama job. and um, But Bianco is actually the, the first one. He, he's the only coach that's still coaching that I actually competed against. But it was crazy because Skip Bertman, 
Mike Bianco and Jim Wells all had the same pitching signals. Like it was <laughs> like, so I mean, it was like, uh, coach, you have to hide because I mean, he's up there on the top step and they'd know everything you were pitching just because they all had the same signals and it was so easy. So if he still has those same signals, I can maybe keep an eye on him and, and maybe pick up some pitches. I have to ask him about that. It's like you, it is almost like now they do. It. Yeah, okay. That's kind of what they've gone to now is just the number system. The catchers will have on their wrist. They'll have a little chart that, you know, 0-1-2 means something. Nick Gaddis straps, uh, snaps a string of 20 in a row, retired by Will Etheridge. Just yanked one down the third baseline. First hit of the night for Gaddis. That ball was hammered. Like Will Etheridge has just been nonstop fastball first pitch, and it seemed like the Gamecock hitters keep taking it. Yeah, you can see Etheridge's nose, man. That ball just came too much middle, ran over the part of the plate. Good job well done, though. 20 straight. Two hits in the ball game for Jacksonville State, both doubles. This one comes with two outs and brings Isaac Alexander to the plate. Look at the pitch count for Will Etheridge. His next will be 75. And you're taught to be 15 an inning. So after the seventh inning, you're looking at if you're at 105 pitches, you've done your job to be in the seventh inning with only 74 pitches. Outstanding. Well, and you've got no idea what the rest of the regional holds. And so the more you can preserve bullpen arms. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if. If he's able to just continue to roll like this, you're going to ride him to probably 110, 115 tight to be able to continue to keep that bullpen fresh. That way you have all hands on deck when it comes to the 1-0 the game. Ole Miss will start Doug Nikhazy tomorrow. Assuming they're able to hold on in this game, that would be against Clemson and Matt Clark. Ninth pitch of the inning coming. He heard us. He heard us talking about that 14 pitch inning, so he figured he'd make an eight one, get back on track. Side base hit. Servideo comes up throwing and air mails it. Run comes around to score. It's now 10 to 2. Back to back base hits for Jacksonville State. Isaac Alexander drives in his 31st run of the year. A piece of hitting right there by Mr. Alexander going with that fastball down and away. Um, you see guys try to pull that pitch. Stay a little inside out of it. Coach Case in a 10 to 1 ball game. He's going to challenge. Continue to play your type of game and put the pressure on the defense. Make them make a good throw. And you'll see right there. It's a video. Air mails it. Hits the backstop. He's still juiced up from that home run. Kind of uncorked that one. RBI single. Pinch hitter here for Jacksonville State, Andrew Naismith. Naismith's been a regular this year for Jacksonville State, even though he doesn't draw the start tonight. He has played in 51 games. He's got 38 starts. Nine times this year, he's had multi-RBI games. Baseball's hard to explain sometimes, isn't it? You, you retire 20 in a row and don't give up maybe one hard hit ball. You have maybe one. And then you go double, single, back-to-back, -back, run scores, and now they're getting somebody loose. <laughs> it's like 
I'm like, Coach, I'm in a 10-2 game with 77 pitches. Look at this guy, and I'll start rolling for you. I wonder if something happened to Alex Strachan for Naismith to pinch hit for him. Strachan was 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a pop out. So Naismith hits from the left side. This ball up the middle. Kessinger able to get to it behind the bag. Takes a step to gather and throws in time to get Naismith and in the inning. Seventh inning stretch time in Oxford at Swayze Field. Bottom of the seventh inning. Ole Miss up eight on Jacksonville State. Ten to two. Ten runs, eight hits. Jacksonville State two runs, three hits, and an error. You folks leaving the ballpark early, knowing that it could be a late night at the ballpark the next couple of nights. Richard Cross, Lance Cormier with you from the Oxford Regional. Glad to have you along. Friday night baseball, fun time of the year. And a fun atmosphere for this game between Ole Miss and Jacksonville State. Ryan Olenek leading things off. He is one for two. Trouble for Kirkland, one away. The ESPN Networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha. Starting this weekend with regional coverage, whip around coverage available through ESPN3, the bases loaded channel. All coverage available on the ESPN app. Good games on ESPN2, ESPNU, the SEC Network, and of course, everything on ESPN3. Tim Elko pinch hitting here for Ole Miss. In place of Kevin Graham. They'll go a right handed bat with Jacksonville State going to a left handed pitcher. They'll go the Sophomore from Florida hitting 155 this year. A couple of home runs. He's driven in eight. Central Michigan was trailing early to Miami, four to nothing. They have come back to take the lead in the Starkville Regional, up five to four. Elko lines out to Brown for the second out of the inning. Fayetteville, Arkansas, is the regional that is paired up with the Oxford Regional. TCU has advanced, thirteen to two. They went over the Cal Bears, and so Arkansas and TCU will meet tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Eastern at Ballmwalker Stadium, an elimination game. Lunchtime tomorrow with Central Connecticut State at Cal. You were saying earlier, a really good day for the three seeds in the tournament. I think, three, I think so far eight and two. Still got some going on right now, but a bad start for the number three seeds. Yeah, Central Michigan now in front. Fresno State leading Santa Barbara early. And TCU now, so that would be nine and nine two. Nine and two. Yep. 
Cooper Johnson out in front. Feel good for Mike Martin and Florida State. They get the win over Florida Atlantic 13 to seven final year for winning his coach in college baseball history. Assignment gets a little more difficult tomorrow for Florida State. Emerson Hancock. Ever heard of him? Got good stuff, doesn't he? Yeah, <laughs> Who on that Georgia staff that Scott Strickland has put together doesn't have, doesn't good, have stuff. good stuff? The guy who said, who if he got to come out right now, would might be the number one pick in the draft. So think about next year. Michigan out of the Big Ten today, a 6 nothing win over Creighton. It's a pretty good Michigan team. Oklahoma State is a one seed, had a low scoring game with Harvard. They beat them two to nothing in Oklahoma City. So they haven't seen many low scoring games or higher scoring games. Anthony Servideo now batting after the walk to Cooper Johnson with two outs. Liberty in Tennessee. Liberty's extended that lead to three nothing. Mm. First pitch strike to Servidio. Servidio with a two-run home run in his last at bat, second home run of the season. I couldn't figure out earlier why they weren't playing that game tonight. The bracket they showed at the end of the broadcast had. A Saturday start time, but ultimately decided to go ahead and play it tonight. Weather cooperating in Chapel Hill. Jacob Adams, or excuse me, Anthony Servideo sneaks that one up the middle. Cooper Johnson goes first to third. Ole Miss has runners at the corners with two down. They now have. A guy with multiple hits in the line that Mr. Servideo backing up that home run with a single up the middle. Jacob Adams still looking for his first hit of the game. Attendance tonight officially 9,810. Looks to be a lot more than that. I've tried to count them all, but I just couldn't quite. Uh, everybody, some of these guys kept leaving, but ran out feels of fingers like, and toes. Feels like a lot more than that. Adams just lofts it down the right field line. Cooper Johnson comes home to score. Servideo slams on the brakes, falls down, and now has to scramble back to the third base bag. Now he's going to try and come home to score. And in the middle of all of that, Jacob Adams took second base. Jacob Adams now with a base hit, an RBI single. And Ole Miss scores a couple on the play, leads it 12 to 2. Aggressive base running by the Ole Miss staff. Holds up a big stop sign. Defense not able to pick up Jacksonville State. Makes another error. Pitching change coming from the Gamecocks. I'll tell you more when we come back. New pitcher in the game, Cody Willingham. 17th appearance of the year for the senior from Rainsville, Alabama. Willingham 1-1 one one with a 5.18 ERA. And Jacksonville State just 
to find somebody that can get some outs. Yeah, they're just looking for zeros across the board and get back to the hotel, regroup. Turn around and play a game at noon local time tomorrow. Some of the other stuff that's going on around the country. Athens Regional, Florida State won early. Georgia no trouble with Mercer, and that sets up Pretty good one tomorrow. Florida State against Georgia State in Athens. Elimination game with FAU and Mercer. Mark McMillan heads up over in the first base coaching box. Mark McMillan, volunteer assistant coach on the staff for Ole Miss. There's been a lot of discussion this year during the offseason about that volunteer assistant slot on baseball and softball teams. Thomas Dillard deep to right field. Goodbye. No doubter from Thomas Dillard and Ole Miss leads 14-2. I think you heard you talking about the only one home run since when? Mid-March? Yeah, it was March 26. Wow. He's had one since then. Thomas make, make that two. Make that two. He gets a hanging breaking ball out over the plate. That's a great swing on that. That's the power that you've seen, man. That's a guy with a lot of power. I don't know why he only has the, the 10 home runs, make that 11, but... He's a guy, you, you doesn't matter what bat. You put a wood bat in his hand, he's going to hit for some power. Now, great Kessinger coming to the plate. Mark McMillan didn't have to do much other than just kind of give a little gentle hand wave and maybe a high five as Thomas Dillard went by. Great Kessinger hit by the pitch. But so much discussion about the, the, the third or the third coach and whether or not there was going to be a third assistant coach. You had the vote. They were trying to put in new legislation to allow universities at their discretion to pay a third coach. College baseball, from a ratio standpoint, coach to player ratio has the largest or smallest number, depending on how you want to look at it, in all the sports. Mark McMillan is an example at Ole Miss. That the biggest frustration, I think, for a lot of people is you got a guy who's working just like all of your other assistant coaches and putting in the same amount of time, and yet – He's not allowed to have benefits, so no insurance, no health insurance for his family, no retirement benefits. And you limit the experience that those guys could get because they can't go on the road recruiting. But there's so many negatives when it comes down to it. Like you said, the benefits, holding a guy back. Now a coach has to hire a guy, not necessarily on his credentials, but, hey, can he work without having, you know, so can he, can he work without having benefits? So it might have to most likely – has to be a younger guy, maybe with no wife or kids. That way he can afford that. But it's a tough position. And the, the part of the continuing your experience and possibly getting another job, well, I mean, you know in the real world, hey, how do you get your other job? Well, you got experience. Well, if I don't get to go recruit, how am I going to have experience recruiting? And so that's, that's something that I think the coaches would really love to be able to have because when it comes down to it, recruiting has gotten so tough to do. This ball line to the opposite way by Cole Zabowski. Kessinger comes around to score. Tyler Keenan for the second time tonight is out at third base. We'll continue the conversation about that third assistant. And we continue. Ole Miss up 15 to 2. You're watching NCAA Regional Baseball presented by Capital One. For Mississippi, Oxford Regional. Clemson got game one, eight to four over Illinois. Ole Miss in control, up 15 to two on Jacksonville State. Looks like we're headed for an elimination game tomorrow between Illinois and Jacksonville State. 
noon central time here in Oxford. And then one and no game tomorrow night between Clemson and Ole Miss. Taylor Broadway, the junior from Cypress, Texas, on the pitch. Pretty good performance tonight from Will Etheridge. Broadway making his 15th appearance of the year. 22 strikeouts, just three walks. I like that. Strikeout to walk ratio is nice. Strikeouts over one per inning. What you like to see, the hits, obviously, is why the ERA is at a 7-1-7. But I think it's a nice job by Coach Bianco getting a guy that might not have pitched if it's closer game. So getting a guy getting a chance to get some NCAA tournament experience. Batting average against number pretty high. 348. That's what opponents are hitting off of Taylor Broadway. You know, I think the biggest question is Will Etheridge's 78 pitches. Why would you pull him in a game that he could have probably easily cruise and finish a complete game? But I think you, you might have to look for that if necessary game on Monday night. You know, could you bring him back maybe for a couple innings? Maybe not to start the game, but for a couple of innings since he is only 78 pitches. That would be your normal bullpen day, uh, maybe a day before. But you, you, we've, we've definitely seen different, you know, a lot worse. So a guy with 78 pitches, or, you know, I don't know if that's Coach Bianco's thought process. Well, and you're up 13. I mean, you should be able to get the final six outs at the back end of your bullpen. Right. But, I mean, as a starter, though, you've worked this hard, 78 pitches. Like, hey, he just went through a complete game. You know, two, you know, gave up two runs in a complete game in a regional. Uh, that, that's something to hold your hat on. So I think there is maybe a little bit of thought process of thinking, you know, more in the future. Seven innings, three hits, two earned runs for Will Etheridge. Between hits, he retired 20 in a row. Doug Nikhazy keeping the chart tonight. A little bit, little bit different than that job feels when you're playing a weekend series because you're charting right and trying to get an idea for how you're going to pitch your opponents yeah you're see an entirely different team tomorrow yeah the nice pitch right there by Broy broadway getting his first punch out on a breaking ball but you're right richard that's a watch right here the breaking ball nice a little hand over hand right there Ooh, he knew it too boy <laughs> but yeah that's your job is the sometimes the, you can feel it when it leaves oh, the hand, you feel, right? yeah you, you know it, and that's why I'm just saying that some of those pitches that Farmer had kind of walked off you, earlier in the game, he had that feel like, man, that's always a strikeout. Why, why is it not here? But, yeah, you, you do have that feel sometimes where the moment it leaves the hand, it just feels so good. But when you go back to that, the guy charting, yeah, you're right. You're charting the next game because you're the next pitcher. You're supposed to be watching, hey, I'm seeing if the pitches are in or out, whatever it is. But it is a little different when you don't, you're not facing this team. So, um, you know, Nikhazy can – Chart the pitches, but not really have to go. All right, you know, I'm not worried. I'm not pitching against this team, so I don't have to worry about it. So you mentioned Taylor Broadway comes into the game. He's probably not coming in if it's a high leverage situation. And you look up and you got a guy at the back end of the bullpen is pumping at 92 with a pretty good hook. Uh, there you go, a little 93. Just showed you something. I mean, the arms are there. Sometimes guys just don't figure it out a little bit. But who knows? You know, you never know what game. I mean, we, we've already talked about when Ole Miss was as high as they could be, then they had lost those six out of seven games, and they were as low as they can be. And Coach Bianco could, really couldn't put a, a finger on, like, what changed? I don't really know. Sometimes that can happen to a player. Like, you know, what changed? All of a sudden now Broadway, can, you know, he might get a little confidence in this kind of an atmosphere, this kind of a game, and next year become one of those guys that you can trust. Full count now to Devin Brown. Flew out in the third, grounded out in the sixth. When you're talking fast, you know, 92, 93 mile fastballs with a, a very nice breaking ball and a guy that throws strikes that we saw with only three walks. Those guys just don't fall off trees, so they can figure a way to get him to be able to keep the hits down. Pop up to right, Servideo. Two down in the eighth. Good haircut. You got to give that one a uh, give that one a go. Oh, he's got a little. I saw we talk about a little little faux hawk, whatever. Got the flow coming out the back. 
He made sure and showed after that home run. He pulled that hand went off as he was after the, he hit the plate as he was going into the, the dugout in the crowd. Did you ever do the bleach blonde or the shave your head or the frosted tips or any of that? We shaved our heads or as freshmen you had to shave your head or I didn't say had we didn't have to the, the upperclassmen shaved their head for you and that's something that kind of <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have a choice but never went never never bleached it anything or we, we won't call it hazing we'll call right. it team, team bonding. bonding hey I'm gonna bond and you well we actually shaved one we had a guy who was actually our closer my senior year freshman from Mississippi shaved his head and that was that's the last time he had hair it didn't grow back and so he, he's been shaving ever since so we all kind of felt bad after that who was that Taylor Tankersley a pretty good big league career yeah he did talking about to the Marlins by the Marlins mm -hmm. right talking about a nasty hook North Mississippi. I'm trying to think of where it was. I don't know. Uh, Vicksburg. Vicksburg, I think it was. Your geography's off a little. It's not north? No. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Popped up behind home plate. Cooper Johnson makes the catch, and that ends the inning. Taylor Broadway out of the bullpen. Strikeout, fly out, pop out. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Will Etheridge will play the role of the cheerleader for the rest of this game. Not past their bedtime, getting to hang out at the ballpark. Look at what, uh, you got a Freddie Freeman friend, fan, you got an Alex Bregman fan. 15 to 2, Ole Miss leading it over Jacksonville State. Did you have a go-to jersey when you were a kid? I was never a big Jersey guy. I, I wasn't a Jersey guy either. My son, though, on the other hand, is a Jersey fanatic. But no, I, I, I like teams. I mean, I, I like the teams. I was yeah. more, I was a Chicago fan. I do love that Jersey, that the old school Astros, man, that orange and blue. But no, I, I didn't have. I wasn't a Jersey guy. Poster on your wall in your room? Absolutely. Baseball I mean, player? Yeah. Who was it? Well, no. Well, Ryan Sandberg was my favorite player. I had a Sandberg poster. Uh, I was more, had more Jordan posters, which, you know, when you're at the age, I think we are at 38 years old. I mean, if you didn't have a Jordan poster on your wall, it was, you know, everybody had down the bow, the bow nose with the, the shoulder pads. Actually had a lot of, I actually had some WWF <laughs> posters. Hey, I didn't have any of those. Come on now. So I had Ryan Sandberg and then also had a Nolan Ryan poster that notched each of his seven no hitters. Oh. Seven no hitters. I actually got to go to the game right after. Seven. Pitched in five it. different decades. I missed number seven by one start. My dad took me to a Ranger game. Pitched to cool. the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. It's pretty remarkable, isn't it? All gets away. It was a called strike and then a throw down to first for an out. Ryan Olenek. Locked in on that one. Strikeout throw out. And a couple of Jordan posters. I mean, I don't know a kid that didn't have the one where he took off from the free throw line in the dunk contest. That means the classic. Tim Elko. Find out the second is first time up. Hits this one past the third baseman, Frederick. First hit of the night for Tim Elko. It's got to feel good for a guy who has struggled at the plate. Step in in an NCAA regional game and get a base hit. Well, that gives the, everybody that's come to the plate for Ole Miss a hit. Adams got his hit. Elko got his his. And it's really, I mean, it's been production up and down that lineup. Cooper Johnson 
One for three with a walk and two runs scored. Aaron Farmer, the starter, four and two thirds. Tyler Wilburn lasted two and two thirds in relief. Cody Willingham, third pitcher of the game for Jacksonville State. runs on 14 hits three long balls tonight Keenan's got one Anthony Servideo hit his second of the year for Keenan it was the 13th and Thomas Dillard hit his 11th how about that with runners in scoring position number you saw six for eight that's what I was gonna say sticks out to me and then you take that on another play nine for 16 with two outs two out hitting I mean that's like I said it's been taught ingrained in my head you win and lose games with two outs Thank God of that 15 runs, 10 of them have come with two outs. I know five of them came with that two-out error. Cooper Johnson hits this one to center. Kirkland into the right center field gap, makes the catch. NCAA.com is your home for scores and interactive brackets. Check it out online, NCAA.com. Down in the eighth, Ole Miss will pinch it for Anthony Servideo with Josh Hall. Hall, a freshman from Birmingham, played at Homewood High School. And he holds the all time stolen base record 224 stolen bases in his high school career. <laughs> you, want me, you want me to say it again? 224? 224 stolen bases. And Homewood, that's not one of those schools that you're like seventh grader, you're playing on the varsity because the school is small. That's a 5 6 A school. Wow. Josh Hall, three time high school All American. Good <laughs> check up there. 1 1. I mean, you think there's just guys in front of you that you can't run anymore. <laughs> you know, it's not like, hey, get on first, still second, and third. Sooner or later, you're going to have a guy that just can't run in front of you and you can't go anywhere. In his freshman season at Ole Miss, Hall has stolen 10 bases and 11 tries. Fifty-first game of the season that he's appeared in. He's at nine starts this year. It'll be interesting to see what Mike Bianco does with his outfield next year. A bunch of draft eligible juniors on this team. Anthony Servideo, a sophomore who's played right field a bunch this season, but is an infield, an infielder by trade. Expect that Greg Kessinger gets drafted. Jacob Adams is a senior, so Servideo probably makes that move back to the infield. And then you got is then you replace Thomas Dillard at the left. Right. Yeah, I mean, Obviously, you got to replace Olenek in center. You know, Ryan Olenek's a senior. That's so when you can be looking at three new outfielders next right. year. Cole Zabowski is a junior. Tyler Keenan is a sophomore. So you could be looking at an entirely new outfield and three new infield positions. Actually, four if you want to count Cooper Johnson as the catcher. Which for most people, most scouts say he could catch in the big leagues now. <laughs> no. so that's one of the things that's not coming back. You, yeah, you think he's going to get drafted high enough. You can almost expect that. Josh Hall draws the walk. Jim Case will make a walk out to the mound. Strike out of Olenek to start the inning. Elko singled past Frederick over at third base. Cooper Johnson flew out and then a walk to Josh Hall. Jacob Adams 
scheduled to hit next pitching change for Jacksonville State. Back with you in Oxford. Ole Miss with a 15-2 lead over Jacksonville State. Rebels batting in the bottom of the eighth inning. New pitcher in the game for the Gamecocks, Michael Gilliland. Freshman from Boaz, Alabama. Since 1-1-85. Gilliland has appeared in 16 games, 17th appearance of the year. He's got one start, 3-1, and one, with a 6.75 ERA. A lot of that comes from those 27 walks in 32 innings. That's just not throwing enough strikes. Got to throw more strikes, keep guys off the bases. All right, I need to clean up a mess that I made a few minutes ago. You were kind enough not to correct me in real time. You probably should have. I know that Nolan Ryan was kind of like the bionic man. This ball drops in, going to be a base hit for Justin Bench, pinch hitting. And a run comes around to score. Tim Elko will score, and it's now 16-2. Josh Hall goes first to third on the RBI single from Justin Bench. So I said earlier that Nolan Ryan had pitched in five decades. I was only off by a decade. He had pitched in four decades, made his major league debut in 1966, and then pitched through 1993. So he pitched in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Wasn't he the, what the, was it the aspirin or Advil? What was his, uh, the, he promoted the, the pain medication. He'd had to take a lot of it. <laughs> Michael Fitzsimmons, pinch hitting for Thomas Dillard. He hits a rocket down the left field line, but was out in front, pulled it foul. Mike Bianco unloading his bench here in the eighth inning. Fitzsimmons, senior captain. Got his degree a couple of weeks ago. Simmons facing Gilliland. Swings and misses at the off-speed pitch. Behind in the count, 0-2. Foul again out in front. Souvenir for the kids down in the corner. Josh Hall at third, Justin Bench at first. Miss on a fastball up and in. Fitzsimmons strikes out to end the inning. Ole Miss three outs away from a opening round win over Jacksonville State. Ole Miss has gotten it done tonight with the long ball. Tyler Keenan got the party started with an early two-run home run. Anthony Servideo, his second home run of the season. And then Thomas Dillard notch number 11 of the year. Lots to cheer for tonight for the folks in red and blue. And then Will Etheridge gave up a double to start the game and then retired 20 in a row. Seven hits tonight for Will Etheridge. 11, the last 11 Ole Miss runs in this game have come with two outs tonight. Rebels have sent nine men to the plate in two different innings, the fifth and the seventh. 16 runs, 15 hits tonight for Ole Miss. Last opportunity for Jacksonville State. Top of the order. Taylor Broadway back on to try and finish it out. First pitch popped up on the infield. Olszewski, the first baseman, calls for it and makes the catch. 
tomorrow. Jacksonville State will meet Illinois in an elimination game, 1 o'clock Eastern, noon local time, and then tomorrow night at 6 o'clock here in the Central Time Zone. Clemson, who won 8-4 to four over Illinois earlier today, will meet Ole Miss. That 1-0 game, so important. The team that starts the regional 2-0 in much better shape. Chopper to second, fielded by Justin Bench. Over to Zabowski for the second out of the inning. How about Taylor Broadway in relief has retired all five that he's faced? I'm telling you, you, you don't ever know when it's going to click for a player. Build some confidence in one of these games. And, I mean, like I said, the stuff is there. The command is there. It's just sometimes it's command in the strike zone, keeping the hitters off the bases. Carl Gindles in left field for Ole Miss. Justin Bench now playing second base. Josh Hall is in right. Ground ball to second. Justin Bench, an easy one, two, three, top of the ninth for Taylor Broadway. Retires all six that he faces. Will Etheridge gets the win. He's now seven and six on the year. Garrett Farmer takes just his second loss of the season. Took us two hours and 44 minutes to play it. Most runs for Ole Miss in a regional.